everybody. Today I'm going to show you how to make some lacto-fermented carrots. I almost said pickles. <laughs> We're going to make carrots, pickle, the old-fashioned way, in a jar like this. And you can do pickles in a canner, and that's how I learned how to do them originally, but I just found out not too long ago about lacto-fermentation, and I've done this with cabbage and with cucumbers and jalapenos. I haven't had terrible, terribly good luck with cucumbers yet, I think because my salt brine was a little bit off, but the jalapenos that I've made like this turned out excellent, and the sauerkraut I've done has turned out very good as well. So we're gonna do carrots. Um, I'm gonna show you how to do that, it's super easy. So what you're gonna need is carrots, obviously. We have a sale going on at our local grocery store, buy one, get one free of the three pound bags of carrots, so I bought a couple bags. And um, optional is garlic. I've got some cloves of garlic that I've just kind of cut into chunks, as well as some fresh dill. You will also need some salt. I use canning and pickling salt. Um, you want salt that does not have iodine in it or any extra stuff in it. You just want plain salt. I hear some people say you can use sea salt. I guess that's okay too. I just, I buy a big box of this and it goes a long way. You're going to want a jar. I use a half gallon jar for this. Um, it's nice and big, it fits lots in there. And I have one of these plastic lids that fits on mason jars. You can get them in the wide mouth or the regular, and that's what I use for the top. And you're also going to need something like a solo cup, one of these plastic disposable drink cups. And I'll show you why later. So the first thing you're going to do is wash your carrots. Don't peel them, you just want to wash them because the natural bacteria that we need for this process is on the surface of your vegetables already. So if you peel your vegetables, you're kind of getting rid of a lot of that. So keep them like they are, just wash them, you know, gentle scrubbing with some water and they're good to go. Um, just go ahead and cut them up. You can kind of tell in this jar I did carrot sticks. You can do carrot slices, whatever you like. Okay, you can pack these in the jar however you want to. Um, this one I tried to pack them kind of vertically in there so the air bubbles could make it to the top easier. Um, it is kind of tricky packing them in there like that after a while, but you know whatever works best for you, go ahead and do that. If you have um, larger hands and can't fit your hand in the jar, just cut them in a way that they'll fit in there so that you can get as much in there as possible. Okay, I've got all my carrots in the jar and you can see I put some dill and garlic in there kind of throughout. Um, there is some on the bottom and some kind of in the middle too, but um, just as you put it in there, put some of the other stuff in there too. You don't have to put dill and garlic in there. You can just do this plain if you want to and it'll be fine, um, but I happen to like dill and garlic so I'm putting that in there. Next thing we're going to do is you need this plastic cup and we're going to put that in here like this and kind of press down on it a little bit like this and then you want to mark it right here with the rim of the jar. We're going to cut this cup kind of at that line all the way around. that and now we need to cut a couple of holes in the bottom and I just kind of pinch it like that and there's a hole in the bottom so I'm gonna make about three of those okay so that should fit in there just right I gotta trim that a little bit but Okay, so what is this for? The purpose of this is to keep your vegetable below the surface of the brine once you have it in there. Um, the reason that this whole thing works is because good bacteria can grow in a salty environment, but bad bac bacteria can't. So if you have any vegetable that kind of sticks up above the surface of the brine, it will spoil, it will get moldy, nasty, you don't want that. So you want to keep everything below the surface where the good bacteria can pickle it 
and keep it away from the air and the bad bacteria. So um, the next thing you need to do is mix up your brine and for a vegetable like carrots you need a two to two and a half percent brine which is kind of the ratio of salt and water. What I do is mix up a quart of brine at a time and the amount of salt that that amounts to to make that percentage of brine is a rounded tablespoon of salt per quart of water. And that's worked out pretty good so far. So a nice rounded tablespoon like that into the water and just stir it until it's dissolved. Okay, then take your brine and pour it in there. Looks like I'm gonna end up with just about the right amount. So I've got it up to there. I'm just gonna kinda jiggle the jar around and get any big air bubbles out of there. They kinda get trapped around the vegetables and you can see them kinda work their way up there. So I'm gonna pour the rest in there. You want it about a half an inch from the top of the jar, roughly. Because um, sometimes when this stuff starts to bubble, it'll raise up and spill over. So then we'll put this, uh, what are we going to call this, a stopper? I don't know what this would be called. You kind of put that in there and press down and you can see the brine comes up through it. But this will keep the vegetable down low in the brine. Then we're going to take our top and just put that on and screw it on and we're not going to tighten it down all the way. You want a little bit of looseness there so that the gases can release. As this ferments it's going to release air bubbles in there and you want that to be able to come out of there. You can buy what's called an airlock um, and a special top to put on this if you want to. That kind of keeps bad bacteria from getting in there. Um, I've never bought one, I've never used one, and so far I don't feel like they're entirely necessary. Um, I've had good results without an airlock, so I don't buy an airlock, I just do it this way and it, it comes out good. Another thing you want to do is label it. I use a dry erase marker and I just write right on the top, you can see this one here that I did before, write on there what it is, fermented carrots, and the date that it started. Okay, that way you know how long it's been working for. And there is a lot of discussion as far as how long you should let these kinds of things ferment and it's kind of whatever your taste is. I would say let it ferment for at least a week, maybe two weeks, um, before you eat them. That'll get it so that the flavors have changed. Um, this one here has been going for a couple weeks and it tastes really good right now. Um, what you can do after it's gotten to the taste that you like, you can put it in the refrigerator and that will slow down the fermentation process and it'll just kind of stall it and it'll keep it where, at the taste that you like it, you know, for longer. Um, the, the jalapenos that I did, we kept those on a shelf in the living room for, I don't know, like a year and they were still really good. They just kind of stayed at the same flavor for that entire time. They stayed crunchy, they didn't get mushy or slimy or anything, they were really good. Um, so I'm debating if I want to put my carrots in the fridge or not. They may just kind of stay out like we did with the uh, jalapenos. Another thing you want to keep in mind is the temperature that these are fermenting at. Um, the general rule is between 50 degrees and 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, our house sometimes gets a little warmer than that when we have the wood furnace going. So. Um, it just speeds up the fermentation. It'll sometimes change the texture of the vegetable if it's warmer like that. Um, but just keep an eye on the temperature and if you have a, a cold area of your house, like a closet or something, um, that you can put this in, um, go ahead and do that. It'll keep it at a, probably a good temperature for that. One other tip I have is, you can see this one back here. I put this in a dish because every once in a while, if you get it filled too full or something starts to bubble a lot, and it spills over, you have something to catch it in. Um, just kind of mess prevention. So I'm gonna open these up. I'm gonna show you that these are still crunchy. Uh, when you open up your jar of fermenting vegetables, it should smell good. Um, it, if it smells rotten like a garbage heap or 
something just really nasty, it's probably spoiled. And if in doubt, throw it out is kind of the saying I go by with this stuff. Um, but this smells really good. You can smell carrots, you can smell the dill, you can smell the garlic, and it just should be very aromatic. It shouldn't be like a spoiled, rotten smell. And another neat thing about this fermentation is that um, this process changes something about the natural pectin that's in fruits and vegetables, and it hardens it, so it, that's what keeps your stuff crunchy for such a long time. So I don't know if you'll be able to hear this crunch on camera or not, but I'll eat one of these just to see. Very crunchy still. And I'm surprised because it tastes so similar to a dill pickle. Even though it's a carrot. I, mean, I, can, I can taste carrot in there, but I can taste the dill and the garlic. And surprisingly, they're tart, almost as though there's vinegar in there, but there's no vinegar. It's just this natural process that makes the tart taste to it. And these are very good for you. This is probiotics, basically. You're growing good bacteria. It's good for your gut. That whole thing, you can research that if you want to, but it's good for you. So give these a try. If you have any questions, please comment below. I'm still fairly new to this whole fermentation thing, so I'll answer questions the best that I can. Um, if you have any tips or suggestions, leave those in the comments too. We like to, you know, share things with other people and learn, learn from each other. So well, thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, be sure to click the thumbs up down below and hit the subscribe button and share with your friends. I'll catch you guys later. Bye.